a lot of this stuff, you know, I learned from all kinds of people over the years. I've had so many good instructors over the years. Uh, but this one was just me thing where I don't know. I never learned this. I just started doing this because why not? So it finishes matches. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. And let's keep going. Yeah, I want to throw it right back to Vic here because he had this idea like we want to keep growing the community. We're just a couple of old guys, old codgers now, and we just want to keep seeing the growth that we're seeing. It's just getting good around here. It's getting so good around here. And uh, so free seminars. Economy sucks right now anyways. I was like, man, I love this idea. So give it up to Vic for this free seminar too. All right, I'm gonna just sit here for a second. Usually what I like to do is lecture a little bit at the beginning because I'm all conceptual. You go to classes and you get nonstop collection of techniques, collection of techniques, and that's never gonna take you anywhere until you understand the strategic layer, the tactical level, and then it comes to technique selection after that. Okay, so I think about all those conceptual, strategic, and tactical layers the most because that's what wins you matches. And then tiny little details that we'll cover today seals the deal for you, um, little adjustments. First, I'm gonna work a path from mount to an arm bar, a kind of roundabout pa path. You may think, oh, just take S mount, this and that. Eh, nobody good lets you just do that. So we have to trick them into making them do this. And we have to use a lot of leverage and a lot of control through each step. So I'm gonna run a path to arm bar from mount I'm gonna talk a tiny bit about mount concepts before that. And then I have another path. So there'll be two paths. Um, and the other path is from side control um, using a kind of unique uh, side control that I use. And then we'll get to an arm bar that way as well. Through both of those paths, there's other submission options that you can take if you're feeling greedy or feeling like it's a good time to take that. So I'll discuss those different kind of, I call them check down options that you have on the path. Um, and then we will, Obviously we'll break and we'll, I'll answer questions. I know Brad already said he has some, some other things he wants to see. Then we'll get into a very standard arm bar position where I'm sitting here attacking an arm bar. And I'll talk through, if you're having trouble defending arm bars or attacking and finishing them, we're just gonna cover it right here, all the details of getting that arm bar finished and variations. Um, then we'll have a chance to do live situationals. That's really how you get better is these live situational Attacking from that position with the arm bar, I'll be able to go around and kind of help you guys out with that. And then the remaining time we can do some open mat and we can throw down a little bit. As long as you guys go easy on me and don't try and kill me, then, then I'll be happy to do that. I'm just teasing you guys do whatever, but it's the end of my training week. Like, oh, I'm already beat up. So, um, and uh, we got Sebastian here recording this for us. So this is going to be on my YouTube as well. So it's free seminar and also it's free online too. So. Um, um, you don't feel like you missed out on uh, oh, I paid, but it's free online. So you won't feel that and you won't feel the pressure. Like I got to take a whole bunch of notes and record this and that. So I thought it's a really cool, uh, concept. So appreciate Sebastian being here and, and recording this for us too. All right. Um, first, what are the four, maybe five, if you're a de degenerate, just want to throw a question out there. What are the four movement patterns from bottom mount that you could be moving through? I'm thinking movement pattern, like. I'll give you the first one, like a upa, like a bump bridge. Okay, so that's one. What else could we do from bottom mount to try and get out and create movement? Shrimp, so elbow knee type stuff, right? Another one, like a more modern one, maybe you no? Kipping escape, okay? Um, and so all these have different kind of uses and they chain together differently. Uh, and then another one, uh, say somebody's got you in high mount what might be a movement pattern you try to try and get them back to low mount? Yeah, the legs, that was gonna be my degenerate one. Yeah. So you had a shoulder walk. Yeah. Okay, so shoulder, shoulder walk. And then the other movement pattern would be if you're a complete degenerate and they're in a higher mount, throwing your legs over the top, maybe even going for a leg lock if, and gluing your foot to your chest if you wanna do that. <laughs> or just putting your feet around their body or in their armpits and stuff like that you see in MMA quite a bit too. So five movement patterns, okay? Um, so first I'm going to have to, I'm going to have a mount and knowing these five movement patterns, of course, if I could take mount with an underhook, uh, and I already maybe had an underhook when I had a knee pinned or in half guard or something like that. And then I advanced up great. We can run a nice deep underhook and that would be a great way to be, but I'm going to assume a very neutral kind of mount position where he is here, tight elbows and I am in a low mount on his hips. So I'm controlling his hips quite well. Although if he bumps me, 
he, he can send me for a ride a bit as well too. Um, what I have to deal with though, if he's gonna shrimp out, he's gonna have to frame my hips or my leg. So right away, I could think, oh, I could pluck the elbows. So, you know, we could put Taylor down here for a second and I could show you how, I, I could put even somebody way small, I'm not gonna move these elbows off him, okay? So trying to pluck these elbows up, trying to underhook him is not gonna work. I might as well go with two C grips on his wrists and a straight arm, which is the strongest I can be with my arms here. And so now I have a good foundation and I have control over his arms, okay? So just kind of give me a little bit of movement here, Victor. So just kind of bump a little bit, get a little bit of a ride going. So I have control, okay? Now the movement is gonna be like this or like this. So you're filling a cup here, whoop, like that, okay? So I have one wrist and I'm gonna take it to the other wrist. So go ahead and put a gable grip on. So if I have my thumbs here together, straight arms, I start to turn this way. And now if you notice this gable grip is pretty weak, you can kind of open the book here, right? Like this. So if I come here and I open the book, I'm gonna then get this pinned with these nice strong straight arms, okay? So I've made my first move, fill in the cup and now I'm gonna come under the head and now I'm shifting to where I'm starting to control shoulder line and not just hip line. Okay, so I wanna make that high mount advancement. I hand it off, okay? From here, this is our first check down option. So I'm gonna go for a key lock configuration and if you're feeling brave and frisky, you could rotate through the head and go for a key lock. From here, you could rotate to a key lock. I'm not gonna take that option because people are crazy and bumping and he still has a lot of control. I don't really have great hip weight. I'm not waiting on his hips anymore and I'm not really waiting his shoulders very much either. How you control people is hips and shoulders. That's where every major muscle group ties in in their body. So I don't have really a lot of control to finish somebody high level from here. You could even kind of crank this. What I'm gonna do is make him think maybe I am trying to finish that. So I straighten my right arm, which allows me into here. Okay, so into here, I'm turning my chin in so that when he raises his hand, I'm trying to be light with it so that my microphone's not jamming into him. But if I turn my chin into his eye socket and he goes to raise his hand, like he can't get around and out of this. So here's our next check down, is if you wanna finish a head and arm choke, okay? I would finish it from mount, or at least try to. I would also potentially grab his head and walk this straight in parallel to his shoulder line because this is the biggest mistake people make is giving any space over here. I can't give any space over there. So this is just a check down option. What I really want to do, see how we have check downs. Here is I'm, he thinks I'm going for the head, but now I've actually cleared this path for me to move to a high mount. So I'm here, I have my chin here. I'm gonna have a base with my arms and I'm going to move up to a higher mount, half of an S mount. My other foot is at his hip and there is not space for him to swim under. I'm here and I have a post on his head here. So I have a post on his head. If I didn't have that post, he's running away from me. He's maybe even gonna start to attack my leg, okay? I'm, this and, and my hips are very close to him. So he's stuck here, okay? If he did start worming his way underneath that leg, here's another check down. I turn this post into a hook here and here for a triangle finish, okay? Once again, this is just a check down option. This isn't the main path today, it's arm bar seminar. So he swims underneath, my post becomes a hook here, here. Again, that space, just like the head and arm choke, I can't give. Again, I lift the head, I fish it over, shin grab, and I flare my foot as I collapse and squeeze down. This foot flare gives the tension that I want. Nope, it's under the head. There you go, now his wrist. Now that one, now straighten your wrist. Yeah, it's like a normal key lock. So now straighten your right arm. And now get good. Look into his face a little bit. Good, now his arm is cracked.
Those are all your check downs. There you now go. we're gonna go to the arm bar. I'm up here, I feel the cup, boom. He's got a grip and it could be a super good grip, but they all unwind with a two on one with your straight arms. You can hold two, at least two times as much weight with straight arms and a bench press than you could actually do with bent arms, right? So we're using straight arms for this with two of them. Now he's got nothing to stop this transition. I go with a grip. I come under, he's again got nothing. Now, he's got nothing to stop it. He could be silly and start to reach through to save his friend over here, and then we know we'd be gift wrapping. In which case, I can run that S mount up this side. There's nothing stopping me now. Here, I'm gonna force it though. I'm gonna assume he has a lot of discipline. There, tight with this foot, I'm hooking his hip, and I can do that because I'm also pushing on his head with this straight arm again, again, a straight arm. Now I come for his elbow here. I come for his elbow and I'm gonna try and sit on his shoulder and get my no knee space up here. So I make this adjustment, okay? Now this arm, I'm gonna hook, I'm gonna post out here and I don't finish the mounted triangle. I don't fall off mount for it. I stay on top in case I miss it. So I'm still on top. You did a lot of work to get on top. You beat the legs, which is a guard, and then you beat these arms, which is kind of a secondary guard. So I have to pass this guard again after I get to mount. I've passed his guard again to get to S mount in a sense. So now I'm gonna finish on top and pay close attention here and also be careful with your partner. I have to put weight on this arm and then I sneak this over the head. See how my feet are in this kind of symmetrical look? They're pinching my knees. I just finish here, okay? I could sit here and just boom, throw my whole weight on him. If I got bumped and I started going belly down, I'll finish there. If things went totally wrong and I got bumped off here, then I'll finish here, okay? I'll show the path one more time through and that's what you're gonna work on first. So this is path number one. We got two paths today, all with lots of check downs, okay? Boom, boom. Boom, straight arm, chin, so we can't get out of it, hands on the mat, feet in a athletic curled toe position. Here, feel that tension on your neck? Mm -hmm. It almost feels like I'm choking you. Mm -hmm. Grab this one, allows me to come up, okay? Now from here, come here, I'm leaning big time to that side and weighting that arm and I break the arm. Well, we make them tap. Don't just break their arm. But I could be very careful up there. Questions on path one? All right, let's get into it. Ready? Uh, you're all the way here. You're now gonna take that move here. This guy was going to be here. Notice how tight he is. So go ahead and start to move around here. Then I can come to this guy and do this. Put them here. And now I, I'm pinching. See how I keep advancing towards his head? So his neck is still flat on his back for the most toes are curled and um, I kind of got my microphone so I'll be a little sloppy oh here see how 
I was this tight, but now I'm that tight. So see his arm configuration. How do we deal with that? There's no problem. Just come up here and S mount him. And so he's decided to give me this one. So I could break it here. I could snap it there, whatever I want. Or I could turn this weight here and come through and take the arm. Right. When you're right there on top, how do you know which one is giving away? Well, a lot of times they'll try and hide that near side. So I, w I could go hunt. So one thing is I can go like this, clear it, and then go hunt too. Okay, so go back to here, here. I'm just going to teach this to the class. Okay, so I can, I can come in and I can go, well, I was actually doing it with this one, but I can come in and I can go hunt for that. And this guy's a little naked now, right? He could be on my foot, but I wouldn't even care. I'll just keep locking the arm, you know? Yeah, it'll pop. So here, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, try and hold on to it. If I even hardly talk about that's in there, some invisible jujitsu in there. Um, one thing I want to address, two things. Um, I guess the switch arm bar, I'll cover that switch arm bar later. I'm just going to do the go and hunting thing. So. I'm gonna have an opponent who has decided to give me this arm instead of this arm. That's pretty common, right? They even hide it behind my leg, right? And so now they're definitely giving me this top arm. So I could sit here and I could, right? I could attack this top arm for days, but I could also go swim with my hips. I call it the hip side arm or the head side arm. You'll hear me t talk about that today. So I could go swim in here and I could peel this to here and now that arm's feeling more naked he doesn't have his friend there anymore this i mean even if i just you know <laughs> this is not going to be a grip that's going to save this arm bar i could even just go like this it's not going to stop me see i'm getting heavy on this one still he's still controlled i'm still able to ride him very easily I'm, I'm sitting on his shoulder in fact i'd be even more of a jerk about this in real life i'd be up here and I'll go with the RNC finish or a grip on the wrist. Okay, so that's the hunting aspect. We see that one with that hunting, but mm -hmm. isolating that arm when he's burying. So you may run into this. I could knife hand in here, and I could potentially even switch arm bar attack this or do all kinds of fun things with this. Or I could swim in with the hip side arm here and watch how when I drop my level I get really strong because now he's dealing with my body and not just some hand and some muscle okay so he's here and I say okay here's a path I could even use two arms I'm probably going to still want something to post if this is live I also need to sit up on his shoulder the more his shoulders get constrained the more this sucks for him and the more he's pinned so I could even use two arms but then what I do is I swim this out here and you may have already noticed that not only could I have this, but I could start to attack this too. And I could even just, just like a boss up here. Cause I want, there's some point where you get so much positional dominance that the submission is just the next positional dominance, <laughs> you know, like that's what mount is. It's, it's pressure over time leading to a submission. So, um, I'm just, I'm just continuing to move to where he's more and more fucked and eventually you see how he can't move anywhere with this pinch and I'm heavy on his hip or on his shoulder. And then I, I only need this much effort. I could totally rip his arm apart with my hands now. So this is legit wrist lock. Let's go right here. Arm bar. I pull above the uh, elbow joints just so slightly and I pull up and in like I'm given the Heimlich maneuver and I, I pinch the arm down, the hand down, so it can't move. We keep the thumb uh, uh, in the opposite direction of the brake. Bam! I'll break this. I could break both of them maybe at once if I really got crazy. But I could just swim this out of the picture. I go heavy. Now I start coming in here. I can just go elbow to elbow 
Go ahead and make a good grip on my, uh, on my ankle there. I could just go elbow to elbow. It's not enough of a grip anymore. Okay, it's not gonna save him. Okay. So I'm sliding my, I could use two hands. There's no rules against that. Boom. Steering the bus. Break that. If you're a degenerate, you could wrist lock him here. The gooseneck wrist lock. Okay, I'm pushing into his elbow base that I have right here, okay? I could, this is such a messed up position for his arm. Or I could sit on it, and now his arm's stuck in this pocket. And then I go elbow to elbow here, and I just got too much power now. You can't deal with it. Ready? Start the You'll grab this elbow. Now, pull this one out, and just hold this over there first. All the way. There you go, sir. Now, Uh, at some point, or you can wrist lock him if you're crazy. We're, our attention spans are going to fall off face the earth, anyways, probably. So I'm going to skip the side control thing. All right, you'll have to hit me up, ask me personally or whatever. But I have this side control path that is equally confusing and unorthodox and kind of just like it's not like take an armbar from side control. It's like pin this, do that. Here's a check down, check down, check down. Here's an armbar. You force it, but you have a million submissions on the way. So. Um, really cool side control path and I'm gonna I thought I might toss it out and I'm going to because I need to get into details of the arm bar uh, that are gonna allow us to by the end of the day say we kind of starting to master the arm bar position and a good way to do that is land back please is right here some people call this spider web position it's just a very common landing spot for the arm bar right whether you started it from guard and kind of swept it to here or whatever so we could talk about arm bars from closed guard. We could talk about non-standard arm bars like inverted arm bars and all this stuff. But we're going to keep it here and we're going to get plenty into the weeds just right here already. So um, I, if you want to hook which of these arms. So if you're hooking here and you're posting out here, then you're going with complete shoulder line control and you're committing to no hip control. And so their hips are going to be up, down, left, right, and all over the place. And most of his escapes are gonna require that anyway. So um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, and he's tucking his elbow. So somebody disciplined will probably be there if I'll give that space. If I can, I'll, I'll lock here so that they can never do that with the head side foot on the bottom. So I'm heavier on the head. Um, but I'm going to, and one way you can switch if you did land here is you just pull up on this and you make your switch here. And then if you actually go and you hook them here, you'll realize, so go ahead and start moving around all you want. Go ahead and run away. Go take off, stack me. So he's not really going anywhere. So I have hip and shoulder control. Always that's superior. If you got somebody's back, what do you got? Hip and shoulder control, hip, shoulder. All of Jiu Jitsu is just hips and shoulders. I found out, it took me a while to figure that out. So all their major muscle groups tie in there. So. What percentage of hip and shoulder control do I have? Here it's pretty high. With both, it's even higher, right? So um, his escapes, I'll give a super quick primer, so I'll switch you spots. Uh, and you can watch this video on my YouTube if you want to see more of this. So first one is I said if he lets me um, under this space, okay, we can start to get out. Another one is if I can take my grips and punch this off my head and shoulder walk over it. Okay. And the reason I'm telling you all these escapes in just quick random order is because I'm going to show you how my position controls for all this. Okay. So I could bump that off and shoulder walk. You'd imagine if he had my leg. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Okay. And the first one here, grab my leg. Oh no, I realize I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, um, I can stack him. Usually people go with the RNC to make themselves extra safe. They switch their hips to here. 
I stack, 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 stack. I post my knee on his butt to keep him stacked and I push down the leg and boom. Okay. Once again, I'm gonna start with this RNC grip. He's gonna hook my leg. I'm gonna now come up and stack you. Just keep the leg hooked nice and tight. See how my hips can't switch now? They can't switch, they can't stack. Okay. So this is you learning some armbar defenses and at the same time realizing that when they hook your leg, they've shut them all down. What all they've given up in exchange for that is it's a little harder to, to do a grip break. So I'm gonna show you the leg hook and then the grip breaks. And then time pending, I'm gonna show you different leg orientations that you can finish in and including um, some re-arm bar stuff, including the far side arm bar when we're here. So how to attack this one when we're on this one. And then also from the stack, how to switch from one arm bar to the other. And you can do the infinite, it's the infinite cigar cutter drill. Okay. So I'm here, I'm deep here. If you're here, you're just being a little crazy, okay? Maybe you're trying to set up triangles or, or something else, but you know, I've done this before and it's just like, I'm just literally being a little crazy because I should be here so that I can stop these hips from doing things, including hooking here. Now what's tougher is to break the grip, but you'll realize I could even chill out like this. Just be chilling. Now you'll realize that even if I take my, this pressure off his head and just float it, he's actually not getting out because of this when normally he would. So I could actually just stomp with either. I could feed this one through and go for an X break. This is all brute force stuff though. And this is going to rely on some strength. I would like to come through if I can and attack the grip. Possibly if I can get this deep, I attack it here and I karate chop it down. Now you'll realize as soon as a hand's floating, go with a gable grip. As soon as I see a gable grip slip this far, even that far, I go, oh, the match is over. Cool. I can go home now. It's that much because we got a handle now. And even, check this out, even if I didn't break his grip, keep your grip, but it, the arm, just let, just let them straighten just for the sake of our own argument. And I can do this too, by the way, to straighten them both. Oh, I never even broke his grip, but I broke his arm. So literally even breaking the grip at that point is like superlifus. I could even come in here and just break his arm. Okay. Never broke his grip. Okay. So, but all of this is going to be pretty tough. Oh, and here's my, this is like butter in the bread here. All this is going to be pretty tough unless I actually am elbow to elbow with him and elbow on through his leg and controlling him here and I'm chilling. Okay. So now I can come up, butter the bread. This is over now. I orient to here. I always go and grab the thumb here and now I can break. So one more time, not sure I've even taught a technique yet. Just kind of a random collection of thoughts here, go back to it. I could even just keep attacking this grip here. And if I, felt like he was close, I could maybe even just give him a little stomp. Sometimes people try and pass this leg over the head and they're thinking about running this way. And as he does that, this one comes through here and then I'm in the cigar cutter. And here's the thing about the cigar cutter. So go ahead and escape the position now and I have no hands. He, he, he'll escape eventually if I give him enough time. No hands. Does that even make sense? Over. Okay, so cigar cutter is the strongest finish I can do. I'm basically choking the piss out of him while I'm doing it. Here. And then I, even sometimes you could be there with a bit of a flare, but this is gonna create looseness through here. So this is a great spot. Like I said, people will try and take your legs and shove them this way. So just like grab my foot and they'll go shoving it that way. And they think they're going to run the escape this way. It's over. Okay. If they don't shove, I pretend if I really want to feed, yeah, it could be like this, but go, go back to the grips. If I want to feed it and he didn't shove, 
I pretend like I'm going for a triangle and then I start to open up and he thinks triangle, but see how his head stays down if he has discipline? And so he's thinking he's gonna do a triangle, but then I just go like this, here, okay? This is just a random collection of thoughts. What I'd like you to try is try controlling him here. Oh, also, uh, you guys know hitchhiker escape, so it's like a late stage escape. See how his hips run that way? What do you think is gonna stop that? Hooking his hips, so come back. So you we, give me an escape other than what I've covered and I'll stop it by hooking his hip. Yep, so he goes, any escapes he does, he's just breaking his grip open, it's over. So I just articulated my elbow a little higher up the chain for more leverage. Sometimes people pinch my head with their legs and stuff. And that's not really doing nothing for me. I'm just hanging out, all right? So I'm just chilling here. And then I'll come up and I'll just attack this and I can straighten. There's strikes in jujitsu if you didn't know. So they allow striking. I'm gonna strike his face with my back of my leg here. And I could do that a few times as I try and break this grip. Again, that's all muscly stuff. If you wanna use a little bit more smarts, I'll reach all the way through to here, okay? So if I can reach all the way through, I can even just attack the hand. And this gable grip, it's pretty weak when you start to collapse it in. Here is where I go next. And then I just hang out. I don't have to let go of this because if I let go of this, he might have a late stage hitchhiker. Okay. So instead of talking about a million random things like I always do, if I was to boil this down to one thing, if you want to try any of those escapes, one of those caught your fancy, good. It'll be on YouTube too. So you can look there. But what I want you to learn is if you landed here, you need to learn how to, because he may have no space here. So I need to make that space and feed, hook. And I close the circuit by resting on my head. That's just how you look like a gangster when you finish. Like I'm a, a supermodel, I should say. But I mean, I could just stay with a hook hanging out here and then I'm trying to get to here. And in this orientation, I can tell I've already got enough of a grip broken and I'll finish here. Or if I can get to the other side of the grip, that's even easier. Now he casts over like a genius, okay? And now he gets finished like a genius, boom. So that was kind of a okay, yeah. People will almost have to let go or they just, they may not want really on the mat, because I mean, I do have to, I do have to go with this, right? And if you're trying to sit up, you can to agree, but not anymore. And the more you sit up, I'm inviting that because your grip is closer to me now. So I'm just like here. And then make a good grip. Let's talk about what you're asking about, Brad. So say that there's a few things that could happen. One is this where he's hiding his arm and another is where he puts this behind my leg, okay? If he puts it behind my leg, I still like to hook here, but all I need to do is catch his elbow. And I'm out of hands, unfortunately. So since I have such good control over him, like I said, this can lighten up. 
and it can just go here, and then the match is over. So again, he's got it all the way RNC style. All right, they love to do this and then stack you. He can't stack me though. In fact, I'll let him come up. I'll invite this because it only makes it closer, this stuff closer for me. I can do this like a goofball, or I can just do this. And then we end the match, okay? So this little key detail right here, um, this is one of those, a lot of this stuff, you know, I learned from all kinds of people over the years. I've had so many good instructors over the years. Uh, but this one was just me thing where, I don't know, I never learned this, I just started doing this. Because why not? So it finishes matches. So another one is if he's still kind of uh, out and about, okay? Then I find this difficult now to even use this one, okay? It's even difficult for me to use this, this foot, right? Because it's just stuck. So I'm just going to get a grip. Get a grip, man. And this is a symmetrical grip. We kind of both have the same grip. I forced him into it, okay? Now I come off the head into an athletic, almost S mount. I switch where I'm posting on his head again. And then I can just finish the mounted arm bar as we did before, or I can rock back to here. Once again, he grips and you can drill this infinitely. It's another infinite arm bar drill here. I hug this in. Here, my butt's gonna go around his body. There is a version where I'm gripping with this other arm and I go around his head. Um, I kinda suck at it, so we're gonna do this one. Come up, I, I let that leg off the head. It's kinda like an S mount, right? I switch my hips. One more time. If I can finish with this still in the line and this, it's great because if I got sloppy for some reason and he goes to pull that through this position, I'm really loose. Go ahead and pull that through that position. Oh, there's a knot in the line. I call that tying a knot in the line. So I'll keep that snake grip, they call it, on the arm. Let's come here. And I'll, I, I don't let go of things. So I see a lot of people today just deciding like, oh, since I'm arm barring now, I let go of stuff. I keep that. I keep the leg and finish. Things that are controlling him, I keep. I only need one hand on the arm to finish, right? So one hand on the thumb to finish. So once again, I got a full RNC behind my leg. And uh, hold on, our orientation's a little weird here. This is still on top now. Easy breezy. Or it's the same thing, but it's floating. So if it's floating, I need to go get it here. Post. Remove the leg on the head, but I'm going to come up. I'm going to push myself up and sit on him. So he's still got pressure. And then I put this here. So he's still trapped in the, the post here from his face. We could finish just like we did before. Oh, we can pull back. Okay. Like I said, that initial grip I made, that could still have been on. In fact, that would be great to hear. Last one of the three is he's going to successfully stack me. So go ahead and start to stack me. And now I'm in trouble. Okay. So what I do is I take this hand, I know I'm pointing the complete wrong direction, so I'm sorry you'll have to move. Just because I'm too lazy to move right now. I'm also stacked. So, <laughs> so now I have another hand right here, right? So I make that same grip. I can post off of it, articulate my hips, and go with a cigar cutter. Actually, I accidentally caught two. Oops. That's no problem. Finish it. Go ahead and pull this one out. So what you actually do is, it's when they're pulling trying to pull the arm out. I have this one here 
and he successfully pulls it out, let's say. Now it's a cigar cutter. And now as he goes to start to pull this other one out, then he goes to start to pull this arm out and then he pulls that arm out. I've only ever gone three deep in this in a match. Check out the position once again. Go ahead and get out of the arm bar for me. Pink. So probably you don't have to go that deep. But you can practice infinite cigar cutter drill. And you can practice infinite moving the butt over the body. Switch. Switching my hips. And then you can practice the really easy one, which is just taking that shin, my calf, to his elbow when he's all the way under my leg. Those are the three details that will win you all championships. Boom. <laughs> I want to see some broken arms and some gold medals, please. All right. <laughs> so next, uh, if you'd like to take a short break, if you'd like to get a mouth guard in, I would recommend that. If you're not going live, all good. Um, in fact, what's the time check? Seven. Seven? Okay. That's a good time. So we'll do is I'll still take a picture at the end. We'll do a group picture at 7.30. Okay. Um, I assume most of you are going to want to do the live. The live is going to look like this, the situational. <clears throat> we'll just do about 15 minutes of this and then we can catch a few open rolls. Um, and if anybody came here just to beat me up, then uh, let me know. I don't want anything to do with that guy. <laughs> uh, just come up, slap me with one of your gloves, and I'll know. That's the universal sign. Um, so the live situation will look like this, and you're going to start with your hand on the mat, just like they do in EBI overtime rules. And your, your amount of finishes from EV, EBI overtime, if you pick arm bars, is going to go way up, right? or just even if you find yourself in this situation. Because probably the first thing you're gonna do is hook here. If you wanna start here and be a rebel, you can do it. I'm gonna say probably start here. And now my opponent, as soon as they're disengaged from a submission threat, if I don't immediately go to a triangle or Kimura or something, they're out, right, if they're out. So anything that disengages for the bottom guy, sweep, whatever, stack, stack it out. And from the top, it's a finish only situation. And uh, if you find yourself mounting your opponent with no submission threats anymore, if they're out of submission threats, then they are out, okay? So that, that resets you. And we'll be on the wall. We're gonna do a number of groups and it's gonna be top, I'm top, bottom, out. So you go top, bottom, out, top, bottom, out, none of the king of the hill stuff, okay? And uh, I'll be coming around watching. I might jump in on a few of them too. But as we start going live, I assume a lot of you are going to try and hook these hips. Uh, then a little mini game is going to develop of people like dropping their legs and, turn, and trying to do things earlier and stuff like that. A whole mini game is going to evolve. And then you're going to hopefully level up a lot from this position at that point just from playing that mini game. So well, the first one, I should guard cut it off my own option because the space was there.
This is gonna be on my YouTube channel in within a few weeks, however long it takes to edit together. So I know if you're like me, 90% of this already out of your brain. We reinforced it in here, and man, I was seeing a lot of it coming together here. These situational drills, all Jiu Jitsu's mini games, break it up, learn a little bit at a time, become a black belt at one area at a time is what you're actually gonna do, you know? So um, thanks again to Victor. He just told me we can do some more of these, so let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Couldn't do this without you guys for sure. So, you know, just tell uh, tell everybody about the next one, and we'll make it bigger and better, just like we do with our lives. Every day is bigger and better. I'm, I'm I love this turnout already. I love the energy you guys brought and the focus you brought for two solid hours. The fights here at the end, y'all are a bunch of savages. To hold you is my YouTube. That's where it'll be. One word to hold you. That's also my Instagram. All right, to hold you. Um, so you can find. I'll be putting maybe a few clips on there, and I have links to my YouTube on there. You can watch my podcast with Victor here too. If you haven't seen it yet, that's a good one. So uh, check that out. And we're just going to bow out. We're going to do a line here. If you know the drill. So you're going to lead it. You're going to lead it. So let's bow out first. All right. Feet together. Show some respect to everybody. Boom. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate y'all. Hey, right here. Right here. Come this way. Yep. Come this way. Then get behind me. You got it. Get behind. Yep. You got it. Thank you.